Um, thank you for spending some time with us here at the Jeffrey B. Valentine Show. I want to give a shout out to our viewers in Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia, not only here in the state of Florida and in Georgia. I want to say thank you to Pastor John up there in the mountains. Uh, Travis Trife, he is back. He's spending more time with us here on the show, and we are talking about refugees and immigrants. So friends and family, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of World Relief. There is too much suffering in our world. Every year, hundreds of thousands of victims are forced to flee their homes. Every day, poverty prevents hundreds of millions of people from meeting basic needs. Every 3.6 seconds, someone dies from hunger. While many are heroically doing something, God longs for the broadest, most diverse social network on the planet, the church, to rise up like never before and engage in the great causes of our time. To feed the hungry, to heal the sick, to house the homeless, to meet the needs of our neighbors. God is calling individuals, communities, and the church to champion the cause of the poor and serve the world's most vulnerable. At World Relief, our calling is to stand in the gap, connecting churches in the United States with local churches abroad to empower them to serve the suffering in their own communities. With your ideas, passion, commitment, and resources, we can be an agent of change that brings hope to the world. Join us and stand for the vulnerable. Uh, welcome back to the show. I'm here with my friend from World Relief Church Relations, my man, my brother, Travis Trice. <laughs> Welcome back, man. Thank you. It's good to be back. Man, I was so excited about uh, uh, the information that you shared with us on last week. Man, you was a blessing. Our viewers oh, uh, uh, were just informed. You just was a blessing to us. Before we get started, just in case you missed Travis last week, we're going to ask Travis to tell us a little bit about himself real quick. So tell us about yourself real quick. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm uh, here in Jacksonville serving as the church mobilizer at World Relief. And World Relief is an international humanitarian organization. Uh, we are evangelicals and uh, we do a lot of things all over the world. We're in about uh, 21 different countries, four different continents, mm -hmm. uh, doing things like microfinance, uh, well drilling. We're doing HIV AIDS treatments and um, disaster relief is another thing that we do. Uh, and among other things, uh, here in the U.S., we do refugee resettlement, and that is when someone is fleeing their homeland because of persecution, and we are giving them uh, a new life, basically, here in the United States, and we really believe that, uh, that we can't do it alone. We really Amen. need volunteers. We need the churches to come in and, and stand with us as we stand for these families fleeing their country. Amen. Amen. One thing about the Jeffrey B. Valentine Show in JBV Ministry we are partnered up with um, in the mission field in Haiti. Mm. Also, we partner up in the mission field in Israel also. And we are partnered up with World Relief. Amen. I believe God has put this into my spirit for the past two years, just to join hand with someone who is effective, mm -hmm. have the right motive, mm -hmm. who God is using to be a blessing, not only in our own backyard, but throughout the world, mm. and spreading the gospel. Amen. Amen. That's what we're all about. Now, mm -hmm. before we move in further, Travis, uh, just in case someone didn't watch the show last week, mm -hmm. what is the difference between what's the difference between a refugee and an immigrant? Mm -hmm. Great question, and I'd be happy to answer that. An immigrant is someone who is relocating from their or their home of origin in their country to a new country for maybe financial reasons or maybe to reunite with a family member. Whereas a refugee is someone who is forcibly displaced from their home because of persecution, whether it be because of social 
uh, religious or political persecution. So refugees really don't have a choice. They have to leave uh, because their lives depend on it. Mm -hmm. And usually they'll bring their entire families with them uh, and spend, we talked about last week, many years. Um, we've had a gentleman here, and so far the longest we've had someone from a camp was 32 years that they spent in the camp before they came uh, here to Jacksonville to be resettled. So we're talking about, uh, about 40 million people displaced million. worldwide, um, and many of them you know, are fleeing war or some, ki some type of disaster. And, uh, and then they stay in these camps, as I said, uh, different camps, usually located in a different country. So by the time they come to the U.S., it's usually their third country that they've, uh, that they've been to. But we, we hope and pray that this will be their final uh, place and that they will be able to call this place home. And we are happy to help them uh, uh, resettle into these new lives. Amen. Amen. I, have a, I had a pastor. He's deceased now, but I love this man. I gave my life under his ministry, Pastor, uh, pastor Callahan. And one thing he said to me, I will never forget what he was ministry this particular Friday evening. Mm -hmm. And he said, ministry costs nothing, accomplish nothing. Mm. Ministry costs nothing, accomplish nothing. Mm -hmm. And when you are effective, especially in the time that we are living in, it's, yeah. it costs. That's right. Amen? Amen. Ministry costs. So the reason why I brought that up, as we partner, partner up, joining him with Royal Relief, we ask you to sow a seed into this ministry. We are a 501c3 ministry, and every seed that you sow into this ministry, we are committed to drill two wells in Haiti. Mm. Uh, we also give into the mission field in Israel with clothing, feeding the hungry, and medical. Mm -hmm. And we also like to do the same thing with World Relief. Mm -hmm. If you go to my website and hit give, if you sow the seed into this ministry, 100% of the proceeds go strictly to them, 100%. Per, 100%. Wow. You can write it off. <laughs> you can write it off, but I just want you to know we will not keep one penny. 100% mm -hmm. go to you guys. 100% go to Haiti. 100% go to Israel. So I beg you, I beseech you to give, pray, ask God. No mm -hmm. amount is greater. Mm -hmm. No amount is small. But if you, I promise you, if you sow seed into good ground, Mm -hmm. you will reap a harvest. Amen? Amen. So, and, and, matter mm -hmm. of fact, let me share this, one of the expense, expenses, expenses that it takes mm -hmm. to bring a family over here. Yeah. Okay, a family just uh, came in, uh, was, it, was it Tuesday? Yeah, last Tuesday. Now, they mm -hmm. came from uh, Congo or was it Sudan? Uh, Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Now, break the cost down to the traveling time. Yeah. So, so it's a, it's a quite a bit actually. Um, if you've ever flown to uh, another continent, especially Africa, you'll know that it's not that cheap. Uh, right. It's much e more affordable to go to Haiti. Uh, so um, we do have clients that will come from all over the world. And what's really interesting about refugees is when they land here in America, they're immediately in debt. Uh, they have to pay back 100% of their travel. Uh, so it's of not their free. We we may think that. We we doing the um, that the, the taxpayers tax paying, paying for, it. for it, right? No, they have to pay it back. It is a loan, and they have to pay it back uh, almost immediately. They have to begin making payments back. To, okay, uh, so for to the time their... they left the refugees mm -hmm. camp, they go from this say for Ethiopia. That that family just mm -hmm. ain't that. The family just got here this past Tuesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they left Ethiopia, mm -hmm. and they went to where? Uh, I'm not sure where they went exactly. But they don't come it, straight to the States. Oh, no, no. They, go they to probably went to either Frankfurt or okay. sometimes Holland or Belgium, uh, sometimes London. And then uh, most flights come all to JFK. Uh, some go to Atlanta. but um, And then, as you know, every flight goes to Atlanta, <laughs> even if it's after JFK. And, uh, and then here to Jacksonville. So um, especially for families with children, can you imagine... Uh, some of our Congolese families are families of 11, or we had a family of 13 a while back. A lot of little children. Um, I have two kids, and I couldn't imagine flying two days uh, with, with them on an airplane. Uh, but usually when they, when they arrive, they're very tired, um, and they don't know that you know about any of these things I'm telling you about. All they know is, you know, we're, we are safe. We have been chosen. Um, uh, uh, we talked about 40 million people displaced. The truth is less than 1% of refugees worldwide will be resettled. 
and that's not just to the U.S. That's less than 1% will go to any other uh, country. The, the U.S. is the leading resettlement country in the world, which I think is something we should be proud of. But um, there is also other countries around the world, uh, such as, uh, you know, uh, England, um, uh, Canada. I know that Holland does resettlement, Australia. Uh, but once they come here, uh, they're, you know, they don't know much about our culture. They've never been here. They've never lived here. They haven't, you know, had much experience with media mm -hmm. uh, to see, you know, about the United States. So sometimes people will land and they say, New York City, Michael Jackson. <laughs> okay, you know, I'm here. Uh, that's all they know. They know some Michael Jackson songs. Um, uh, and then we do have some as well uh, that are coming from middle class countries that, you know, may, may be a lawyer or a doctor, you know, but they had to flee for their life. Uh, so, so you never know, you know, what uh, social class of refugee is going to arrive. But we love them all the same. And one of the most powerful things you can do with volunteering with us mm -hmm. is going to the airport and picking them up straight off of the airplane uh, with us. We'll have our translator there, of course. World Relief staff will be there. But we love to bring along churches that are committed to walking with these families. And the costs, as, as you were talking to, um, they are given you know, a certain amount uh, for a very short period of time, one or two months. And what we try to do is we try to get donations. So if you have a couch or a kitchen table or oh, fast, a stroller yeah. or baby diapers, you know, we take those donations and that then we don't have to spend, you know, their allotted money on that. And they can use it for important things like electricity and rent. And, uh, and to, to, to close on this subject, the final remark I wanted to make is that we have three months, three months from the moment they land to three months from then to get them resettled. In other words, they have to be working. They have to have their kids enrolled in school. They have to hopefully be learning English or very close to it. And we can't do this without your help. And we appreciate all of our churches and volunteers who have helped us over the years. Amen, amen. We gotta take a break, we'll be right back. Men's Closet, a one-stop shop for men's and boys' clothing, wants you to look good year-round with the best prices in town. Get two suits for $100. Stacy Adams suits, buy one, get one free. Are you big or tall? Men's Closet has all sizes and does alterations on site. Caps, clergy robes, tuxedo rentals, we do it all, including casual wear like two-piece sets, just $39.99, or cargo shorts, two for $40. There isn't a look or style you can't get at Men's Closet. When you look good, we look good. Hearts are made out of bamboos and then mud flow and it is it has a thatch roof thatch roof and uh, we have no proper bathroom Every day in southern Sudan Christian area was like what happened to New York in September 11 because of our like Christian religion as well, the Burmese military like come to attack my village. You know, they like come with airplane and bomb up our village. You know, and finally like they like burn down our village and we have to move to like Thailand. As the uh, war and famine and different things that causes refugees to flee their own home country increases around the world, the refugee populations don't ever diminish. It's a very bad day, but when we came in the United States, it's just vast difference. It's not easy, but with time, things are getting better. We have a commission to reach out to the world, and instead of going out into the world, the world's coming right here to us. The church has an opportunity here to do what the church does best, and that's to be able to serve other people. It's such a wonderful opportunity to befriend them, to welcome them. Our families, particularly, have had a wonderful experience of integrating people right into their home lives. They bring a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of even uh, different religions, but we're still able to show them the kindness through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So for us, it's a perfect fit. To see you know, people from the Sudan and, and Cuba and Iraq and Burma um, and all these other countries just coming off and a lot of them in their native attire, uh, I can just imagine what heaven will be like.
Everything that we're about is to help these refugees not only become self-sufficient, but to be able to have receive a witness of Christ shining through different people that we put them in contact with. It was never designed for one caseworker or one staff member to be everything to a family. We have to have the community, we have to have the church. I feel like I'm helping to bridge that connection between them, their culture and our culture. And there's something about that that just feels good to me. They need Americans to show them how to live in America. What is this? Chin. It was a lot more relaxed than I expected it to be. It was just coming into their home and getting to know them as a friend. I have gotten to hear more about their story and, you know, where they've come from. We don't have nothing. We are Cambodia, just, you know, empty hand, and they provide us many things. Refugees are survivors. They're tenacious. They are resilient. They figured out how to escape their own country and make it to America. They hit the ground running. They want to be self-sufficient. They want to be able to support their families. They want to have opportunity to start their lives over again. And all they need is just a little bit of push in the right direction, and then they go. It has been you know, a blessing to me and to my family. I've been able to meet good people, good friends. It's been great for the refugees that have come here, the, all the fo great folks through World Relief that have come here, and the company has also benefited. The values of World Relief align with the values of Marsh Furniture Company. We have a person from Iraq, his name is Hossein. He recently uh, got accepted to work over here, and he's working for three months. And he was uh, introduced uh, by uh, World Relief. This is the Newcomer School. Uh, we're a school that serves students in grades 3 through 12 who have recently arrived in the United States. A majority of our students are refugees. So much of what we do throughout the day, we rely on World Relief and their staff. Definitely couldn't do our job without World Relief. When refugees arrive in the United States, they have so many different needs. And what we're looking for, people to come up and be able to lend a strong back to help move furniture. People to go into people's homes and teach them how to cook and how to keep their modern apartment. Teach the children how to bounce a basketball, how to throw an American football. As believers are getting involved in the refugees' lives, the refugee often becomes the teacher in reminding us of just what Christ has done for us. So they teach us a lot. Local churches all over our region are embracing refugees, these victims of persecution. They're inviting them into their own communities, into their homes and into their lives. You can do mission work from the comfort of your own home. In fact, you can invite the world into the comfort of your own home. And World Relief has this opportunity to empower those local churches to serve these most vulnerable people groups right here in our own community. Well, welcome back to the show. I'm here with my friend Travis Trice, uh, church relation, church relation mm -hmm. <laughs> at World Relief. Uh, Travis, before we dive in, uh, let's give them a shout out. How they could be, uh, how can they volunteer? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, what uh, Pastor Jeff just said is exactly right. I do church relations, and we are very relational. So uh, you know, if you'd like me to come in and speak to you or, or your church or your pastor or your missions team, uh, I'm available for that. We also have a volunteer coordinator. Her name is Katie Sullivan. She does an excellent job training and equipping uh, the body of Christ to go into refugee ministry. So we don't just throw you in there and hope for the best. <laughs> we want to make sure that you understand cross-cultural ministries. Yes. Um, we want to make sure that you understand you know, who these people are and how to approach them. And we really want to make sure that you understand you know, that we're dealing not all with Christians. We do have a lot of persecuted Christians coming in from the nations, but we also have uh, people of different religions, uh, you know, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, 
uh, atheists. We have uh, all kinds of people from all walks of life coming through our doors. And we believe that our first calling is to love and serve every one of them, period, yeah. regardless of, uh, of what, their, what their religion is. Um, however, uh, we do see that, uh, that some people may have not ever been exposed to Christianity before, yeah. you know. Share some of that testimony. Man, we had uh, one, one young man, and his family came over, and um, I said, I love to take refugees out to eat, man. Yeah. There's nothing. Now, you got to be careful, you know. You don't want to take a, a Hindi out for a burger or something, right. you know, or a Muslim out for pork. <laughs> right. Um, you have to be respectful. And, um, and I did take this young man out for pizza, not thinking I had pepperoni on the pizza, and he said, I can't eat this. And I said, oh. And I, I said, I took the pepperoni off. I said, is that okay? He said, it's touched it. So, um, so that was my first. And this is when I was a volunteer, by the way. I didn't know any, any better. And, uh, and it's okay. That's if, good if information. You don't, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, we've all, you know, it's funny trying Learn to. Learn about experience. Cross-cultural experience is so fun. Because they're learning about you. But you know what? Behind the scenes up here, you're learning about them, too. And you're really coming to, uh, to respect and just admire these people and what they've been through. Does it help you with your witness? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, my youth group was radically transformed w through World Relief. Uh, that's how we, you know, got involved. I had a youth group and we were doing missions trips every year. And to save money, <laughs> we had to find something local. And when I realized that God was bringing the missions to our doorstep, um, I had a pastor that said, we can go on a mission strip without crossing the Buckman Bridge. <laughs> and I said, that's right, you can. And my youth group got involved, and before I knew it, uh, some of these students who, you know, I don't even know if they would witness to their friends at high school, all of a sudden they're getting, you know, Burmese English dictionaries and trying to learn their language so that they can share the gospel with them oh, and, and communicate and love with them. Uh, and these, uh, these students just were radically transformed. And then that blessed me to see that. Uh, but we, we had this, this young man from Iraq. Father was killed right in front of him. Um, he, you know, fled here with his, his family. And, um, and he was the one I was taking out for pizza. And, uh, you know, we just got to talking. And this is a four-year story, by the way. We're not going to talk about all four years, but we're going to fast forward. Uh, but I, you know, me and, and some of my youth, we reached out to them. We helped them, you know, with learning uh, some English, you know, learning. Can you imagine going to school the first time in a new country where you don't speak the language? Um, so, you know, our students were, were very pivotal in his life because they kind of helped him, you know, with the feeling accepted, feeling loved, um, you know, helping him with the language barrier and uh, helping his mother get the kids registered for school. There was just so many things that, that needed to be done for this family. But my youth group uh, did that. And he also had a younger sister and a younger brother, too. And they were blessing them as well. But um, we just kept this relationship going. You know, Thanksgiving and Christmas, we'd visit with presents and food and mm -hmm. just spend time fellowshipping. And uh, I got to know a lot about Iraqi culture. Uh, I got to know a lot about his life. And, uh, and he became my friend, you know. No, he was not a Christian. Yes, he was a Muslim. No, he wasn't dangerous. Um, yes, I felt very comfortable bringing my children over into, you know, a Muslim's house. And we just fellowshiped and we uh, talked. And eventually we began to speak English together. And now we're communicating better. And he got a job and we celebrated that. Let's fast forward. This relationship spanned four years, and then all of a sudden one day he, he began to ask me about Jesus, yeah. you know, and he said, I have, I have never seen Christianity the way I've seen it here, and I want you to, to help me learn more about, you know, Jesus. And I got to talk to him about baptism, about what it means to be a Christian, and then wouldn't you know it, we went out for pizza again. <laughs> and um, and he ate it up this time. Oh, he ate it. And um, with the pepperoni. With the pepperoni, man. And he said, um, he said, uh, I I want to be baptized, and I want you to baptize me. And um, and that was one of the most Amen, honorable. Amen, somebody. Amen. Yeah, Lord, I mean that me. that was one of the most honorable moments of my life. And I you know looked across the table at him and I said I would be honored to baptize you. And um, and he uh, came to my church one Sunday, and uh, we baptized him. And, uh, and I am just so oh, proud of that. And that's just my testimony 
uh, personally. Um, but we see this very often. And then there's times when we don't see it. But n no matter what, we want to sow a seed of, uh, of kindness to these people. Yes. And uh, we want to have a welcoming heart to them. Right now in America, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of fear going around about, you know, uh, people of different religions, especially Muslims, especially people from the Middle East. And I would just say, you know, the Bible says God did not give us a spirit of fear. You know, so, so if you are out there and you're afraid or you're not too sure how to approach this, this type of ministry, but you're curious, please let us, let us help you understand uh, cross-cultural ministry. And we would be happy and honored to train you and, uh, and hook you up with a, a, a newly arrived refugee family because we have about 500, Jeff, per year coming into Jacksonville and through World Relief. And we would love to, uh, to have you, you know, love on one of these families and help them acclimate to, uh, to our society and our, our culture. Well, Travis, you know, we also, um, uh, the show comes on in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So you say you have a great uh, foundation, a base? Absolutely, yeah. We are in Nashville, Tennessee. Shout out to the Nashville office up there. And uh, they are set up the same way we are here in Jacksonville. They have a church mobilizer who would be happy to talk to you. They have a volunteer coordinator. They have a director. And, um, and I believe Nashville receives quite a few refugees. So uh, if you're hearing this and watching from the, the Nashville area, um, you know, get in touch with them. I'm sure that they would be happy to, to get you involved as well. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have to take a quick break. There is too much suffering in our world. Every year, hundreds of thousands of victims are forced to flee their homes. Every day, poverty prevents hundreds of millions of people from meeting basic needs. Every 3.6 seconds, someone dies from hunger. While many are heroically doing something, God longs for the broadest, most diverse social network on the planet, the church, to rise up like never before and engage in the great causes of our time. To feed the hungry, to heal the sick, to house the homeless, to meet the needs of our neighbors. God is calling individuals, communities, and the church to champion the cause of the poor and serve the world's most vulnerable. At World Relief, our calling is to stand in the gap, connecting churches in the United States with local churches abroad to empower them to serve the suffering in their own communities. With your ideas, passion, commitment, and resources, we can be an agent of change that brings hope to the world. Join us and stand for the vulnerable. <laughs> 